What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to a series all about UX Pin, which is a design and prototyping tool that thinks about design and prototyping a little bit different than some of the other tools out there. In the first video, we got you up and running with the basic overview of UX Pin. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the more complex features inside of UX Pin. We're gonna be covering topics like auto layout, using real data inside of your projects, components, states, interactions, variables, and expressions. Ready to get a little bit more advanced? Let's dive in. Okay, I have UX Pin open on my computer and I'm using the dark interface today to give my eyes a little bit of a rest, which looks really, really nicely. And uh, I have a prototype that I've been creating and I'm on a sign in screen. I'm gonna start talking about some complex features, but I'm gonna talk about the simplest of those complex features, which is the pen tool and masks, which you probably know about if you've been digging around in other design tools. Uh, UX Pin has a pretty fully fledged pen tool, which you can get to by pressing P or by hitting the pen tool right up here. So once we do that, we can actually kind of zoom in and um, just like most other pen tools, drag around, get some nice Bezier curves. Um, we can actually, uh, you know, connect and then fill. I like that little feature here inside of UX Pen that as you uh, kind of move around and you're about to connect, we see the shape kind of fill up, which is kind of cool. All right, next up, I wanna take a look at the auto layout feature inside of UX Pin. It's a good auto layout feature that allows you to automatically dictate spacing, um, add new elements inside of a layout and everything will automatically adjust. For instance, I have all of these elements separate. If I wanted to put them inside of an auto layout, I could grab these two elements and come over to the right hand side and hit the auto layout, which is still in beta, but it's working really, really good. I set the auto layout. Do I want it to be vertical or horizontal? Do I want it to, it's going to use some uh, kind of CSS flex box kind of terminology, start, center, end, space between, all that stuff. Uh, we can wrap things and then we can distribute things, start, center, end, or stretch, right? So it's very flex boxy. Uh, here we can also set the gaps um, and dictate everything inside the gaps. Uh, if I wanna do the same thing here and set the auto layouts for each one of these, from there I could grab all three of these and put them inside of auto layouts if I wanted to and on and on you go. Um, it's just a, it's a good way to keep everything organized. All right, next up, let's talk about using real data inside of your projects. Uh, UX Pin gives you a couple different ways to do this, um, and I'm gonna demonstrate it on this design course listing page that I have. So uh, we have this listing page. We have a bunch of these cards that are in here uh, inside of our group, which is actually an auto layout. Uh, and the reason I did that is because if I wanna add another card, all I have to do is copy and paste and it's going to perfectly space it inside using auto layout. I like having four there on our page. I'm gonna go back in and you will notice a few things. Uh, they all just have kind of filler information inside. This is supposed to be the course name. Uh, you can see that over here on the left-hand side and uh, this is gonna be our image, and this is going to be our price, and this is going to be the duration or how long that course is gonna take to complete. Uh, so with that being said, we could fill this in with some kind of default data that UX Pin offers to us. I could grab each one of these images, and I can come up here to the top to the fill with data button, and this is a contextual selection. That means I have an image selected right now and UX Pin is smart. It knows that's an image and it's gonna tell me, do you want an avatar or a person uh, or do you want a specific thing? And we're gonna pull all of this from Unsplash. So I could put uh, like, for instance, the word course inside of here and boom, it's gonna update it with course. Or I could put food in here, um, but let's go back. Let's do something like learning and it updates everything with learning. Or how about tech? Um, okay, so it's updated everything with tech. That's great. But if we were to grab something like this course name and go ahead and grab that, it knows that it's content. It's a text string. So what type of content do we want to put inside? Is it things that have to do with people or addresses? Is it e-commerce or finance? Is it technology that gives you all sorts of interesting things, right? But a better way than using even the pre-provided data that UX Pen offers is to actually use the JSON CSV or Google Sheets option. So I have a Google Sheet here and uh, all I have to do is, you can see I have all this information. It says course name, author, price, and duration. And over in my uh, like my elements, you can see I've named them that exact same thing inside of my Google Sheet. So course name, author, this is the price, and this is the duration, right? So what I can do is come into this Google Sheet and I can go ahead and publish to the web and make sure that it's a CSV and grab that URL. And then I can come in here and grab my card, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna select 
all of the cards, the individual cards that are in here. So let's grab all four of them like that and then come up to fill with data and just drop in that URL for our Google Sheet and press return. And it's gonna go out to the web, grab them, boop, and implement all of that data right inside. Okay, next up, let's talk about using components. We touched on it in the first video, but I'm gonna hit it a little bit harder right now. We have a button. We really like this button. We might wanna reuse this button. You guessed it, we're gonna make it into a component. You do that by pressing Command K or by hitting the Create Component kind of a toolbar menu button thing up here. So we hit that, but we've turned it into a component. Now we can edit the master and UX pin is always gonna keep those somewhere else by hitting this little purple kind of edit master button up there. So we could always edit that just like so. Uh, we select it and we can make changes to it. Maybe we wanna change the color, whatever. But the good news is now we can always bring this in to um, our project. If we drag another one out, we're just dragging instances of that component. And if we change it in one place, it's gonna change it everywhere for us. We can also get this into our design system. So we could select the component that we want and we could add it into our classic design system. I can get myself out of the way so you can see. We're currently selecting our classic design system. That's the name of our project. Um, and we can select the component and add this to the design system. Now that shows up back in UX pin in the design systems for this project, okay? After we've created our component, we can actually add multiple states to any element, whether it's a component or a non-component element. So I'm gonna select my component, I'm gonna go to Edit Master, and I'm going to create a new state for this button. Maybe we need a pressed state, all right? We're working on a mobile application. It doesn't have hover, but it could have pressed. And so all we need to do is select the element and then head right up here and hit add state. You can also hit command shift S and we're gonna create a new state. Now I really like this interface up here that it provides for us. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. It's gonna allow, it's gonna tell us we're currently on the base state, but we can set the name for a new state. For instance, we can call this one pressed and we can toggle back and forth between the two and we can edit them and rearrange them and delete them really, really easily and create new states. We're on our pressed state right now. So why don't we actually just grab the color and just make it a little bit darker, right? We'll darken it up, beautiful. And now you can see that our little state always shows up there. It's saying on the base state or the pressed state. Okay, very cool. So now we have that and we're gonna head back now that we've made changes, we've added a state to our component, we can actually push these changes directly to our library where we could pull the most recent changes from our library. It's telling us that our component is out of sync. We can either edit the master, break it, or like I'm gonna do right now, push it to the library and we get almost like a GitHub type, you know, uh, uh, like commit message. And we're gonna go ahead and update that like so. You can also, create variables inside of UX pin, which is something that, you know, no other design tool right now is doing. It allows you to create variables, okay? To create a variable, all you have to do is head down to the bottom left-hand corner and you'll see the little variable icon. I'm gonna click on that and then I'm going to create a new variable and we're gonna call this variable uh, user name, like that, okay? and I press enter. I can give it a default value if I want, or I can delete it, but we'll just keep that there. We're gonna call it user name. Now, why would I wanna do something like this? Well, we can create complex interactions that say after the user sets their name here and moves on into the actual application, let's actually bring that name, utilize the information because they've changed the name of the variable or the state of the variable. And then let's utilize that throughout the rest of the applications. Really immersive prototype experience, okay? All right, let's set an interaction for this form field that should be the person's first name, the user's first name, okay? So we're gonna come in and that's called input name. I like to put little asterisks next to them so I know that that's kind of like a dynamic region that I'm gonna start utilizing. That's just something I like to do. I'm gonna come up and hit interaction and I'm gonna say when uh, the value changes, like the value of the information inside of this input field, I want to set the variable, okay? Which variable? We wanna use username. And we want to set the variable with the content of the element. You can do other things like active state, the value of the variable, whatever it is. But we wanna actually update it with what's ever inside the input. And then we're gonna select the, uh, the input field like that. So now we have, there's that little asterisk. I know it's the input name 
actual input field there. And uh, there's no animation really needed here. But now what we've done is we're going to actually change the name of the variable or the content of the variable. Okay, not the name, the content of the variable. Once we've done that, we can head over to our home screen and we have a really cool uh, thing that we can do here where uh, we have a section where the user's name should like input there. So without anything selected, I'm actually going to come up here and hit a new interaction. And I don't want this to be on key press. I want it to be on page load. And what I want it to do is I, I want to actually um, set some content. Okay, so I'm going to set content. It's going to ask me what content do you want to set? Again, I have my little target picker. I'm going to select the, the, the word user that's there. And I want to use the value of the variable, which variable username. So we're kind of programming kind of visually here. And I want to say add. Okay, so now we're, what we're saying is, hey, on the load of this page, what it's going to do is actually take that variable name we've set and implement it here. So what we can do is come back to our the start, like the sign in here. Let's press play really quickly. So I'm going to put the name Jesse in. I'm going to press log in and it's going to slide over to the right and it actually inputted my name there and filled in because we've changed the actual information of the variable. And now the variable is set. While I'm using my prototype, the variable is set as Jesse. So later on, if I want to use that variable again, like later on, I can go into account settings or something and it'll say like update your name. Boom. I could update my name inside the application and then I could have that update the variable again. So if I want to change my name to Jesse S right inside of one place, then it updates the variable. That variable is active and being able to be used. You are literally changing information. You can do so much cool stuff with this. It's absolutely amazing. All right, the fact that we can create and use variables throughout our project is absolutely amazing. But what if we want to modify it and change it? Well, that's where expressions come in. You can see inside of my design, I have uppercase word high, but then no matter what the user puts in, they might put lowercase as their name, it's going to show up lowercase here. It's going to kind of ruin my design. So what if I want to kind of modify it, take control of that? I can use an expression. So what I'm going to do is I've deleted that previous interaction. I'm going to come in and set up a new interaction that says on page load, we want to set the content. What content do we want to set? I'm going to hit my little targeting thing and I'm going to hit the actual text box that's there that's supposed to be for my name. And then instead of saying value of the variable, I'm going to hit expression and I get a whole list of expressions that UXPin has made available to me. You can do all sorts of things with numbers. These are basically programmatic ways of editing and changing content. If you are used to coding, you might know some of these like floor or ceiling or things like uppercase or capitalizing. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to get uppercase here. And all I have to do is type in a dollar sign and I get a list of variables that I'm able to use in my project. So how about we'll uppercase the username and then we will set that. Okay. So we're going to set the content with an expression that makes everything uppercase. We'll head back to our login and we'll run our prototype. And now we should be able to type in all lowercase here and log in. It's going to take it. It's going to type in all uppercase for me because I've written an expression that actually modifies the variable. Well, that's it. Those are some more advanced features of UX pin. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure that you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification icon. So you know when more videos like this one come out. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave those down in the comments and check the description for some helpful information on UX pin. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're making amazing things. Hope you're designing amazing things. And I hope that I'll see you in the next one. Take care.